around six criteria. So if you guys flip over the, uh, the first page, you guys should see a little intro to the site. Okay, maybe not the second page. Wow, there's a little printing error happening. <laughs> Sorry, to there. Okay, third page. The first two you can scribble on is a good thing. Okay, that's the content, so maybe the fourth page. <laughs> So there's the intro, so if, uh, so uh, those criteria are market economics, success skills, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, environmental sustainability, and business ethics. So essentially we, we run projects and programs and we compete around these areas. We're marked on how many people we've helped, what kind of impact we've had, how we've made a difference to other people's lives, and we compete with teams in Ontario. And then based on that, if we do really well, we compete with teams across Canada. And so we have regional competitions and national competitions. We came number two in Canada for the past two years. Um, if, we, if, we, if we had come one, uh, uh, number one, we would have competed with SIPE teams from all around the world. They have a world SIPE competition. And uh, that happens like all around the world. The last one was in Singapore this year, it's in Belgium. Um, so this is how, yeah. Who's your first? Memorial. They're, they're down east. to make money. Yeah. yeah. So what did they say? Rich people don't work for money, they make money work for them. Does anybody know how that works? Yeah. They use their money, invest. Yeah. They spend the on and then they get their money back because basically they, they just invest again and again and again and they say make sure they make sure they have sure. Yeah. So compound interest and all that stuff. So so you know that's that's one of the fundamental things. Like when you grow older, most people are like Every rich person in this world, the first thing I'll tell you is, I don't work for money. My money works for me. Yeah? But what happens if you're not successful, if you're not rich, and you grow up um, in a neighborhood like Regent Park or Janet Finch or whatever the case may be? What happens then? More opportunities. Less opportunities. Less opportunities. Yeah, what else? They're not sure. Are you as equally likely to succeed as somebody
grew up in Regent Park, and I've seen tons of people. All the people I've grown up playing basketball with, so many of them. It's, it's, and, and you know, the good thing about, like, the good thing about my experience is that I've had such a broad spectrum of people to engage with. So I have friends who've been to the best private schools, been to the Ivy League schools, and then at the same token, I have friends who've never even thought about, you know, finishing high school. And what that gives me is a lot of perspective, right? Because what I've come to understand is that people, like I think O'Neill was mentioning before, you grow up with certain concepts of yourself, right? What you think is possible, what you think you can do, you know, who you think you can become, and all these things kind of limit us, right? So more often than not, you would kind of be like, you know, either I'm going to be a basketball player or I'm going to be a rapper or this and that, and if you can't do either, I'm going to go be a drug dealer. Right, and so those three things kind of compose what? what? What what we think is possible for us. So it's very interesting. If you look at you know anything on the news, TV, whatever. If you look at any television show, do they show a lot of black doctors, a lot of Hispanic doctors? Yeah, do they do they showcase like a lot of Hispanic? Any Hispanic, uh, you know, um, lawyers or black lawyers or or you know it's, it's certain professions that are, you know people like to think are you know professional and high paying or whatever. More often than not, you turn on the TV, you log on the, you know, you go to BET, and well, what do you see? Right? So you kind of, so what happens is we come up with this preconceived notion of what we think it means to be a black person. What it means to be a colored person. What it means to be, you know, a Hispanic person. And what happens? We limit ourselves. We think, you know, um, this is my little box, this is what black people do, and I'm gonna stay in here, and this, you know, my life's already been defined for me. And that's what I've seen a lot of people do. But here's the funny thing, right? So for, for the most part, our environment defines us. But what's, what's unique about being human? You can choose. You can choose, yeah? So Latoya, let's say you were an elephant, right? Can, can you act like an elephant? Can you show us a little? No? <laughs> who, who has a favorite animal? You like jaguars? Can, can you roll like a jaguar? <laughs> yeah. Is that a good jaguar? No. No? He <laughs> means <laughs> alive. <laughs> Adrian, what's your favorite animal? <laughs> elephant? Okay, can, can you do an elephant impression for us? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to pretend Adrian's an elephant. Dinah, what's your favorite animal? It's a monkey, but I'm not going to act it. <laughs> Noises? No. <laughs> no? Who can do an impression of their favorite animal? Mine's uh, kind of a jaguar, but yeah. Cheetah. So. Cheetah? Yeah. Imagine a cheetah kind of going around. Like, <laughs> yeah? Does that happen? No. No? Can an elephant decide to be a cheetah? Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> an elephant will get stuck on a cheetah. Are you serious? Accidentally kick it over. You guys can't see an elephant being a cheetah? No. Just picture it in your head, you know, kind of grazing in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe. Yeah, but I know a monkey can't be a cheetah. Monkeys are too aggressive. He's a gazelle. He probably step with the gazelle. It should all be done. <laughs> Poor gazelle. Okay, so the, the, the key point is that, <laughs> you know, human beings are very lucky because, you know, unlike animals and the rest of the animal world, we're not defined by our nature. Yeah. Right? You can choose your own nature. So a human being can decide to be an elephant, as we've just seen by Adrian, <laughs> a monkey, as we've seen by Diana, or a cheetah, or a jaguar, or whatever the hell you want. You want me to tone it down a little? <laughs> no. You guys don't hear that a lot? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, we're, we're, we're just in this room. It's not quite outside this room. So what does that mean? It means somebody growing up in the poorest neighborhood with the poorest circumstances, you know, um, who, who's heard of like a rags to riches story? 50 cents. <laughs> 50 cents. It's a real one. 
That's fantastic. Okay, so the biggest oh. problem that we just kind of identified yeah. is that a lot of people growing up in these very poor income neighborhoods think that the only way to be successful or rich is how? Rapping. <laughs> Drug dealing, rapping. I, the, the biggest mistake is that... And then there was a little about turning to yes, man, and like that. I, I mean, <laughs> more. the very fact that we live where those kind of things are glorified and those kind of things are kind of portrayed as the ideal. And then all these kids kind of growing up thinking like, oh, you know, forget school. You know, I'm going to live this kind of, you know, I mean, just imagine, right? Like, I'm, so, I'm like, you know, drug dealers in my building. Like, what kind of life they live? <laughs> the whole day you're outside. Trying to hustle. Trying to hustle. <laughs> the whole day. Hi, pretty lady. You, you can't even relax. Because why? Because you're always on the lookout for cops and security guards and this and that. And what are you doing? You're making people's lives miserable. You're, all these addicts that come to them, all these homeless people that are trying. I mean, how, say you made a million dollars off that stuff. How do you feel satisfied? No benefits. You know, there, there's absolutely no gain whatsoever. And yet, this is what you see on TV. This is what you guys hear on rap videos, rap music, rap this. All these things are glorified, like there's no tomorrow. And we stand for this, and this is terrible. Why? Because, you know, I mean, Ben and Adrian and all you guys are intelligent, but you got a lot of people who maybe not, not smart enough to kind of know. No, 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 up, no, right? no. The people, they're smart. Like, yeah. I think guys go on the street and they think they're smart. I'm like, why don't you just go back to like, school? Like, yeah. something yeah. 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 I know so smart. that was in the honor roll, yeah. like, we were the honor roll, got medals from grade 8, then went into high school the muscles and you just change. Yeah. I, I tell it's people all the time, right. hustlers, and they, they would make the best business people. They would clean up people <laughs> on Bay Street because the way their mind works, if you put them in the right context, they would stock market, investment banking, you just, you just give them the right context and they would kill it. There, there's no doubt. Right? But it's a choice. Though. But it, it's a choice, right? And, and, you, and you gotta, you gotta you set that context to them. But the important thing I want to guys, you know, you guys sitting here, you know, you guys are listening, make sure, you know, your friends or people you see in your community, talk about this stuff, right? Next time you hear a song that's kind of, you know, glorizing this stuff, talk about it. Think about critically about the lyrics and stuff like that. You know, is this empowering or is this disempowering? You know, so, because at the end of the day, it's you guys, right? You guys relay the information, right? So keep that in mind. But back, back to choosing your nature. What I want to point out was, so in Regent Park, the dropout rate about 2000, in the year 2000 was 51%. So let's, how many people do we have in this room? So.